Bears are mammals that belong to the family Ursidae. They are covered in thick fur and have long snouts, short tails, and non-retractable claws. Their size varies greatly between species. They can weigh as little as 60 pounds, or 27 kilograms, or as much as 1,000 pounds, or 450 kilograms. There are eight species of bears. These are the American black bear, Asiatic black bear, brown bear, giant panda, polar bear, sloth bear, Andean spectacled bear, and the sun bear. For centuries, people didn't consider the panda to be a true bear. However, recent molecular analysis has revealed that they are, indeed, true bears. There are also subspecies of bears such as the Kodiak, Grizzly, and Eurasian brown bear which are all subspecies of the American brown bear. To understand why all eight bear species live a largely solitary life and don't hunt in packs, let's first look at bear habitats. Bears live in a variety of habitats and are found in many places across the globe. They live in Europe, Asia, and the Americas. They are found as far north as the icy Arctic and as far south as Bolivia and Malaysia. Bears have adapted to survive under different climatic conditions and in a multitude of landscapes. Polar bears live on snowy tundra and frozen ice caps. Brown, black, and sloth bears are found in woodlands and grasslands. Andean bears prefer rainforests and cloud forests. Pandas temperate mountainous forests and the sun bears tropical forests and swamplands. All bears, however, are solitary. Why is this? The dawn bear, a bear that was alive 20 million years ago and was only the size of a terrier, evolved into some of the largest terrestrial carnivores the world has known. Many bear species became extinct during the Earth's evolutionary past, but the bears that survive today have adapted well. The development of their teeth enables them to eat both plants and animals. Their large size helps them to conserve heat, catch prey, and defend territories. Their home ranges grew, and with that, their behavior adapted to a life of solitude. Bears do occasionally socialize. They socialize during mating season and when a mother looks after her young. Sometimes they will tolerate each other, such as during the salmon run. Multiple bears will stand on the riverbanks and waterfalls catching the prolific salmon as they swim and leap upstream. Even then, there is a hierarchy among bears. Smaller bears give way to larger bears, and sometimes scraps break out. But, by and large, fishing for salmon within close proximity of each other is as close as bears get to feeding together. We know bears don't live together or hunt in packs, but what do they eat and what do they hunt? What would hunting in packs mean for bears and the ecosystem in which they live? Most bears are omnivorous, which means they eat both plants and animals. There are a couple of exceptions, however. Pandas are almost entirely herbivorous with 99% of their diet consisting of only bamboo. The remaining 1% includes eggs, small animals, carrion, and foraging amongst surrounding farmland crops. Interestingly, the panda still has a gut conducive to eating meat but they have a gene mutation that means they cannot taste the meat. They evolved to eat bamboo almost two and a half million years ago. They are able to digest this fibrous plant because they have large numbers of plant-degrading bacteria in their guts. On the flip side, polar bears are almost entirely carnivorous. This is due largely to their habitat in which little vegetation grows. They feed on marine animals and carcasses, but sometimes pick at berries seaweed, and other vegetation. When actively hunting, bears hunt alone and tend to be more ambush predators. Polar bears typically pounce on seals that pop up in the ice through their breathing holes. They also stalk resting reindeer and usually only chase prey over short distances, although this hunting technique is changing due to climate change. Brown bears tend to hunt young ungulates such as moose calves. Their hunts can last over two hours and cover distances of 10 kilometers or more. They sometimes try to separate mothers from their young by running into the middle of a herd. Due to their size, the bigger bear species can take down large prey. But what if bears could hunt together in packs? 
Hunting as a group requires collaboration and good communication. Animals such as lions use visual cues when they are collaboratively hunting. The lead lioness typically selects the prey animal by staring intently at it, and the other lionesses follow. Bears communicate with both vocal and visual cues. They make noises such as grunting and humming. They also mouth each other's faces when greeting one another. When bears aren't being sociable, they communicate by leaving scent markings with urine and feces and by rubbing or clawing trees. Bears are very intelligent animals. Their intelligence compares to that of higher primates. Some can remember where they encountered food 10 years before. They remember familiar bears they have encountered years previously. Sun bears have even been shown to mimic each other's facial expressions as primates do. This level of intelligence and bears' abilities to communicate with one another would serve well for collaborative hunting. Hunting together would significantly alter the bear's social structure. They would need to come together during hunts and feed together once they had made a kill. Larger bears would likely have dominance and priority feeding over the smaller, younger bears. This behavior can be seen when bears catch salmon along the rivers during the salmon run or when multiple polar bears feed on a whale carcass. Hunting together would also enable the bears to catch larger prey. Bears already kill moose and occasionally bison, but they more commonly single out youngsters, neonates, or weak animals. A group of bears would be able to regularly target herbivores like adult bison. It is difficult to say whether polar bears would benefit from group hunting. They already take down moose and seals, but would they be able to corner and kill whales? They are exceptional swimmers, swimming at least six miles per hour. They're also highly intelligent animals, so there is a possibility that a group of polar bears could pursue and tire out a whale, much the same as killer whales do with seals and dolphins. Recently, polar bears have been shown to chase moose into the water, pursue it, and then lean up on it to drown it. Multiple polar bears diving into the water after prey would be an impressive sight. Whether such scenarios could happen is debatable, but what is certain is that there would be a significant impact on the ecosystem if bears hunted in groups. Prey species may develop different evasive strategies. Their behavior would change in response to predatory bear attacks. The omnivorous bears may feed less on plant matter as they would likely get sufficient calories from large, regular animal kills. Plants themselves that are normally eaten by bears may be affected. They may thrive or they may provide food for other species. Their seed dispersal, which is usually reliant on bears consuming them and then releasing them from their dung, may be negatively affected. Pack hunting bears may outcompete other predators, like wolves or jaguars who occupy the same habitats. Prey species may become overhunted with more effective kills from bears, on top of that from other apex predators. With such an impact on the ecosystem, what would be the benefit of group hunting for bears? Animals that hunt together, eat together. They essentially help each other out. Younger members learn from the more experienced individuals. Hunting as a pack is likely to result in a reduction in hunting distance and therefore energy expenditure. Pack hunters tend to have a higher kill rate than lone hunters, making them more successful. They can also take down larger prey, resulting in greater energy intake. Groups of predators can also chase away intercepting scavengers that try to tuck into the kill. The abundance of prey is often a determining factor in cooperative group hunting. If the prey is abundant, then lone hunting is beneficial and predators do not need to share their meal. If the prey is scarce or has a patchy distribution, group hunting is much more effective. It seems bears evolved to live a solitary life with an abundance of food. Their ability to eat both plants and animals means that they aren't reliant on only a single food source. This means there isn't a need to hunt as a pack. Bears are exceptional at what they do. They are loners like the majority of carnivores. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Time, time.